Hi everyone, my name is Megan Brown and I'm an educator at the Bruce Museum. And today I'm excited to bring to you our program, Digital Bruce Beginnings, a program for children three to five years old and their caregivers. Today's program theme is going to be all about pollinators. We'll explore pollinators through spring season and some of the other topics we talked about in past Digital Bruce Beginnings, read a book about pollinators, and then talk about some activities and imaginative play you can do at home all about pollinators. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Let's get started. We've spent a lot of previous Digital Bruce Beginnings talking about different parts of spring and all of the things that make up spring. One of the things we haven't actually directly talked about though are pollinators. So we've talked about flowers, how they grow, spring weather, but pollinators play a really important part in it. So what is a pollinator? A pollinator is an animal or an insect that helps plants grow. Some pollinators include insects like bees and butterflies, but animals like birds, bats, and even the wind is a pollinator. Pollination is a very important part of the life cycle for a plant. Insects, birds, bats, and the wind take the pollen between flowers and plants. This means that the plants that make seeds, that make them for reproduction, pollinators can help get them and move that seed so that they can grow and become their own plant. This is a cycle that starts every spring and ends in winter. But why is pollination and pollinators so important? Well, without pollination or pollinators, 80% of the plants, fruit, vegetables, and other things that grow all around us would not be able to grow at all without their help. And additionally, pollination helps keep our environment healthy by supporting new plants and new plant production to grow, and it also keeps pollinators busy. One thing to mention though is pollinators move pollen naturally, and they do it without even realizing they're doing it. Some examples of this include color or markings on a flower that help attract and guide insects to pollinate them. One example of this includes bees, who are often attracted to bright blue and violet colors. In the case of hummingbirds, they like red, pink, fuchsia, or purple flowers. And butterflies enjoy bright colors like orange, yellow, pink, and red. And fragrance is really important for them too. And then at night, for example, with moths and bats, those smells are really important as well for them to help pollinate. The way in which a flower is shaped also attracts pollinators. Butterflies prefer flowers with flat petals that act like a landing pad for them to sit on. And additionally, long tubular flowers attract hummingbirds. And that is because hummingbirds have their long beaks and they can easily fit them into those flowers to gather nectar. These are just some of the examples of pollinators and the way pollinators help to grow and pollinate flowers in the spring. Have you ever seen a pollinator before? If so, where? If not, look up some pollinators and learn how they help flowers grow. Maybe try to find a video and watch them in the process of pollination. Pause this video and discuss with your adults some of these different pollinators and how pollination works. I'll see you back here in just a minute. Now that we've had some time to closely learn and explore pollinators, I thought it would be nice to read a book about some pollinators. And today we're gonna read The Flowers Are Calling by Rita Gray and Kendra Pack. a little black bear. No, not a bear. He does not care. 
they are calling a butterfly to dip from the air. Are these any of the pollinators you guys saw? Flowers are calling a wet green frog. No, not a frog. She likes her soggy bog. They're calling a bumblebee to look near a log. Flowers are calling a porcupine. No, not a porcupine. She wouldn't take the time. They're calling hum a hummingbird to sit at their vine. Anne's lace right here. Butterflies like landing pad when they drink their nectar. So this is a prime example of a flower that would work for them. But then we have monkshood and bumblebees like this because they are hefty enough to push deep inside the flower where the nectar is stored. And then we have trumpet honeysuckle, which hummingbirds use their long tongues to reach the nectar hidden deep in the tubular flower as they hover and drink. These are just some of the flowers that we discussed earlier that these pollinators really like. Flowers are calling a loud blue jay. No, not a jay. He wouldn't stay. They're calling a honeybee to fly their way. Flowers are calling a little moose. No, not a moose. What would be the use? They're calling a beetle to eat their pollen loose. Can you guys see the beetle? Flowers are calling a rabbit to stop. No, not a rabbit. It's not their habit to call a rabbit. He might grab it. They're calling a bee fly to visit their spot. Another example of flowers that are great for pollinators includes an apple tree blossom. Honeybees help make many of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables we eat by pollinating fruit tree blossoms, such as an apple tree. There are thousands of varieties of wild bees that help them make many of the foods we eat. And then for magnolias, beetles visit these flowers and have been for more than a hundred million years. And then we have a violet down here. And bee flies look like bumblebees, but they have two wings instead of four. And like hummingbirds, they are able to hover their furry bodies in the air as they drink nectar. Do you see anything similar that we've learned about flowers to these? Flowers are calling a small brown snake. No, not a snake, for goodness sake. They're calling a pollen wasp with nectar to take. are calling a fat raccoon. No, not a raccoon. He doesn't care for white bloom or sweet perfume. They're calling a moth in the light of the moon. Flowers are calling a desert deer. No, not a deer. He can't even get near. They're calling a nectar bat to flap over here. So here are some other flowers. There's a blowout beard tongue and pollen wasps like bees make loaves of nectar and pollen to feed their young from those flowers. Then we've got cardin cactus, 
which is what the lesser long-nosed bats have long tongues that can reach the nectar deep inside these bell-shaped flowers of the carden cactus. And these cactus flowers unfurl for just one short night. And then we have the moonflower and Carolina sphinx moth. And sphinx moths are expert flyers with long tongues like the carden cactus that blooms by the moonlight and opens for just one night and depends on the nighttime visits of moth for the population. Some of these flowers wouldn't exist with these pollinators. Isn't that important? Flowers are calling a busy wren. No, not a wren. He's already seen them. They're calling some children to look again. And wow, what a fun book that showed us all different pollinators, but some of the flowers as well that they explore and help keep around. Did you guys learn about any new pollinators or flowers in this book? Pause this video and discuss with your adult any of the new things you learned about pollinators or plants and flowers. I'll see you back here in just a minute. Now that we've had some time to explore all of the wonderful things pollination and pollinators have to offer us, how about you and your adult try some hands-on and imaginative activities that will get you up and going and thinking more about the spring season and pollinators and flowers. For the first activity, we learned about many different pollinators. Some of them move differently than others when they collect pollen. So I thought it would be fun to pretend to move like a pollinator. Maybe you have a really long beak, like a hummingbird. Maybe you fly and land gracefully on a flower like a butterfly. Move and pretend like some of those pollinators moving pollen. It could be fun. Another activity you could do that gets you outdoors and exploring is on a nice spring day, go out with your adult and play I Spy and see if you can find any pollinators in your backyard or local park. Take turns looking for them. And maybe afterwards, do some more research about those local pollinators around you. Thank you guys so much for joining us today for Digital Bruce Beginnings. If you would like to share anything you've made after watching this program, with the permission of your adult and using the hashtag Bruce Museum, share that to social media, we'd love to see it. For more digital programs from the Bruce Museum, please make sure to visit www.brucemuseum.org. Thank you so much for joining us and bye friends.